Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. Welcome to the final lesson of module two, the bonus lesson. It could be one of the most useful lessons in the entire course because it addresses two of the most common mistakes that I have seen students make in English ATAR. And those mistakes relate to failing to notice the singular versus plural distinction and the and versus or distinction in an exam question. This might sound super simple and for the most part it is. But the purpose of this lesson is to make sure that you never make these mistakes because they can cost you big time. For instance, if a question stipulates that you should discuss an idea, but then you discuss ideas, your response might be brilliant, but that doesn't change the fact that you haven't answered the question properly. Obviously, this lesson isn't about a key concept found in the syllabus or a past exam question, like every other lesson in this module, but it's the last lesson of module two because it sets us up very nicely for modules three, four, and five. So on that note, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Everything you need to easily pass English ATAR. English ATAR made simple. Powered by Saints Coaching. Here's what we're going to discuss in this lesson. We will highlight the singular versus plural distinction, discuss some examples, highlight the and versus or distinction, discuss some examples, and outline a simple summary. That is it. The singular versus plural distinction. Let's start off by defining the word singular. This is what the Oxford Dictionary of English says about that word. Singular means of a word or form, denoting or referring to just one person or thing. The main part of this definition is just one person or thing. For instance, one idea, one thing. On the other hand, this is the definition of plural of a word or form denoting to more than one. The main part of that definition is more than one. An example is ideas, more than one idea, ideas. Here is a scenario to help illustrate the singular versus plural distinction. Let's say you make a bet with your mate, Tiffany. This is the bet. If Tame Impala has a song in the hottest 100, Tiffany will give you 100 bucks, but if they don't, you have to give Tiffany a hundred bucks. You think it's a great deal because Tame Impala released a pretty successful album throughout the year and you voted for a bunch of their songs. Triple J Day comes along, you and Tiffany are at a pool party and Tame Impala ends up having two songs in the Hottest 100. You're stoked, you've won the bet. You go to collect your $100 from Tiffany, but she refuses to hand it over. She does this because the terms of the bet were if Tame Impala has a song in the Hottest 100, not if Tame Impala has songs in the Hottest 100. As a result, Tiffany asks for her 100 bucks. You begrudgingly hand it over. Tiffany got you on a technicality. Similar remarks can be made about the singular versus plural distinction in English ATAR. Tiffany is a waste marker who will get you on a technicality if you're not careful. Let's check out some examples of some past waste exam questions. Starting with some examples that look at singular concepts. Questions that require you to discuss one thing. Analyze how text one works to convey an idea about human nature. In this question, idea is singular, meaning you should only discuss one idea about human nature. Another example, reflect on how at least one text works to challenge or endorse a controversial perspective. Here, perspective is singular, not perspectives, so you should only discuss one controversial perspective. These examples bring us to our first key takeaway, which is a question that includes a concept in its singular form often requires you to address one instance of that concept. The word often is there because of this little thing called collective nouns. Beware of these in exam questions. What are collective nouns? They are nouns that appear as a singular, but they refer to a group of people or things. 
Here's an example. Compare how two texts use voice to encourage you to empathize with others outside your own context. The wording of this question is such that you could discuss a different type of voice for each text, and that would adequately address how each text uses voice. In this example, voice is a noun that appears as a singular because it has voice, not voices, but refers to a group of voices, one voice from each text. These sort of questions don't come up that often, but just be mindful that they do exist and they can come up every now and then. Those were some singular examples. Let's check out some plural examples. Our first one is explain how an idea about society is communicated through visual elements of text three. Here, visual elements is plural, which means we need to discuss at least two visual elements. Another example, explain how at least one text conforms to generic conventions while still challenging its audience. In this case, generic conventions, conventions is plural, which means we need to discuss at least two generic conventions in the text. The relevant key takeaway here is that a question that includes a concept in its plural form requires you to address at least two instances of that concept. Finally, let's take a look at some singular or plural examples. Consider how other interpretations of a text helped you evaluate its perspective or perspectives. In this example, the forward slash between the E and the S means that you can choose to discuss one perspective or more than one perspective. We have a very similar situation with the next question. Discuss how your awareness of the emissions and or marginalizations within a text shape your response to its perspective or perspectives. In this situation, the brackets around the S mean, like the last question, you can choose to discuss one perspective or more than one. Our final key takeaway for the singular versus plural distinction is as follows. A question that includes a concept followed by an S in brackets here, like we saw in the recent question, or forward slash S means you can decide whether to address one instance or more than one instance of the concept. That is the singular versus plural distinction done. Now let's move on to the and versus or distinction. The Oxford Dictionary of English defines the word and as follows. Used to connect words of the same part of speech, clauses or sentences that are to be taken jointly. The main parts of this definition are words that are to be taken jointly. Moving on to the definition of or, used to link alternatives. The main part of this definition is alternatives. This word implies one or the other. Lastly, and or means either or both of two stated possibilities. The main part of this definition is either or both, meaning you can choose both options or just one or the other. Here's another scenario for you. You're at a party and your mate Taylor says the following. I'll give you $1,000 if you eat fermented shark or bull's testicles right now. $1,000 is $1,000, so you go ahead and eat the fermented shark and bull's testicles. You go to collect your $1,000 from Taylor, but she refuses to hand over the money. She refuses because the terms of the deal were, I'll give you $1,000 if you eat Icelandic fermented shark or bull's testicles right now. The terms of the deal were not eat Icelandic fermented shark and bull's testicles. So in this scenario, fermented shark or bull's testicles means eat the fermented shark or bull's testicles, but not both. In another version of the scenario, fermented shark and bull's testicles means eat both the fermented shark and bull's testicles. This time, like Tiffany from the previous scenario, Taylor got you on a technicality. Similar remarks can be made about the and versus or distinction in English ATAR. Taylor is a waste marker who will get you on a technicality if you're not careful. We're going to say goodbye to the bull's testicles for now. Bye, bull's testicles. And look at some relevant waste exam questions that look at these distinctions between and versus or. Starting with some examples that have the word and in them. 
First example is explain how at least one text manipulates the conventions of genres for a particular purpose and context. In this question, the phrase particular purpose and context means you need to discuss a particular purpose and context, not one or the other. You wouldn't be answering this question properly if you just discussed one particular purpose or one particular context. You need to discuss both a particular purpose and a particular context. Another example, explore how voice within at least one text reflects the values and attitudes of a particular context. In this example, values and attitudes means you must discuss values and attitudes, not just values or attitudes. Here is our key takeaway. A question that includes the word and in it requires you to address the term before the word and the term after the word, not one or the other. Let's have a look at some questions that have the word or in them. Explain how at least one text has transformed or adapted genre to alter an audience's attitude towards an issue or concept. We've got a double whammy in this one. Firstly, transformed or adapted genre means you must explain how one text has transformed or adapted genre. You can't discuss how one text has transformed and adapted genre. Secondly, regarding this phrase issue or concept, this means you must discuss an issue or a concept. You should not discuss an issue and a concept. Another one, explore how the patterns of language or structure are used to represent a complex idea in at least one text. Here, the phrase language or structure means you must discuss patterns of language or patterns of structure, not both. Key takeaway, a question that includes the word or in it requires you to address the term before the word or the term after the word, not both. And finally, some and or examples. Discuss how your awareness of the omissions and or marginalizations within a text shaped your response to its perspective or perspectives. Here, the phrase omissions and or marginalizations means you should pick one from the following. Discuss omissions within a text. This refers to the or. Discuss marginalizations within a text. Once again, refers to the or. Or you should discuss omissions and marginalizations in a text. And this obviously refers to the and in the question. Final example, show how analyzing voice in at least one text led you to question the assumptions and or values it communicated. The phrase assumptions and or values means you should pick one from the following. Firstly, you should discuss assumptions within a text. This refers to the or, which means you can pick between one or the other. Second option is you can discuss the values within a text. And the third option is you can discuss assumptions and values in a text. Bringing us to our final key takeaway of this lesson and of module two. A question that includes and or in it means you can decide whether to address one term or both. And that's all the content for this lesson. Here is a simple summary of it. First part of this lesson, we looked at the singular versus plural distinction. Here, we discussed the scenario where there is a $100 bet with Tiffany, the Tame Impala will have a song in the Hottest 100. You ended up losing this bet because Tame Impala had two songs in the Hottest 100. Tiffany got you on a technicality. Then we looked at some examples of the singular versus plural distinction in some past waste exam questions. A singular example, we looked at analyze how text one works to convey an idea about human nature. Our relevant key takeaway was a question that includes a concept in its singular form often requires you to address one instance of that concept. The word often is in here because you should beware of collective nouns in exam questions. Then we looked at some plural examples and one of those examples was explain how an idea about society is communicated through the visual elements of text three. The relevant plural concept here is visual elements, meaning you would need to discuss at least two visual elements. Our key takeaway was a question that includes a concept in its plural form requires you to address at least two instances of that concept. After that, we looked at some singular or plural examples, and one of those examples was consider how other interpretations of a text helped you evaluate its perspective or perspectives. The forward slash between the E and the S means you can choose between writing about just one perspective or more than one. 
Relevant key takeaway for this part of the lesson was a question that includes a concept followed by S in brackets or forward slash S means you can decide whether to address one instance or more than one instance of the concept. And that was the singular versus plural distinction done and dusted. Then for the and versus or distinction, we looked at the scenario of Taylor offering you $1,000 to eat Icelandic fermented shark or bull's testicles. Once again, you got gypped here because you ate Icelandic fermented shark and bull's testicles. Taylor got you on a technicality. Then we looked at some examples of the and versus or distinction in past waste exam questions. Some and examples, one of those included, explain how at least one text manipulates the conventions of genres for a particular purpose and context. Here, you must discuss a particular purpose and a particular context, not just one or the other. Relevant key takeaway, a question that includes the word and in it requires you to address the term before the word and the term after the word, not one or the other. Then we discuss examples of or in past ways exam questions. One of those examples was explore how the patterns of language or structure are used to represent a complex idea in at least one text. In this instance, you must discuss patterns of language or patterns of structure, not both. Key takeaway, a question that includes the word or in it requires you to address either the term before the word or the term after the word, not both. Then we looked at some and slash or examples. One of those examples was show how analyzing voice in at least one text led you to question the assumptions and or values it communicated. In this instance, you should discuss assumptions, values, or assumptions and values. One of those three options and you'll be fine. The key takeaway here was a question that includes and or in it means you can decide whether to address one term or both. That is all I wanted to say in this lesson. I know this is pretty straightforward and look, you're probably thinking I wouldn't make a mistake like that. I wouldn't confuse a singular for a plural or a plural for a singular and I wouldn't confuse an and for an or or an or for an and. However, the timed conditions of an exam do some pretty weird things to your brain. This lesson has tried to prevent any of those weird things happening to your brain. Also, you'll be glad to hear that this lesson has no accompanying activities, which means that's a wrap on module two. Yeah. I just wanted to say a huge congratulations for getting to this point because module two is by far the most demanding module in the entire course. Remember, completing aims is not a race, it's about getting a decent understanding of the subject. If you haven't watched all the lessons and completed all the related activities in this module, please go and do that before moving on to the next. If you have watched all the lessons and completed all the related activities in this module, that means you're now in a position to tackle exam questions. And the first step to tackling exam questions is to command the comprehending section. That is what the next module is all about. I can't wait to see you there. Until then, keep it simple. I'm going to go and wash this shirt.